So welcome to a quick video about template components in Apex and yesterday I got a question on my blog post about uh, template components by Ribero PVB. sorry if I mispronounce it. Hi Philip, thank you for a great post, thank you. Is it possible to use a template components to render a single region that have multiple entries to generate it? For example, in timeline is a single body, but it have multiple entries to form the body and um, so as far as I understand it correctly so a normal uh, template component like uh, here this one is just a progress bar basically every row returned from the database uh, concludes in one rendering of the template components this is one row JavaScript SQL is a new row P PHP is a new row and um, yeah, of course, um, you can then also easily use it in a report. And I think this is also the, the main concept, how the Apex test intended it to be used. But um, I, I thought about this too. And um, I think um, I already actually found a way to do this in a way like you want, for example, to show one element for um, three rows and then the next three rows or something basically you want to apply any logic to the returned rows to to form something different than just one row per data and um, yeah so um, the way to do this is we use um, web components or um, custom elements you could also say uh, web components is a web standard for yeah making HTML components. So there's an example here. You, so you define your own HTML component, app drawer in this case. You define it here a class, and um, the cool thing about it is you can have a lots of uh, logic behind it. You can pass attributes to it and do lots of JavaScript in there. And um, from the outside, it's just an HTML element sitting there you don't you just place it in your code and automatically the, the whole logic is behind it so you encapsulate um, all the logic into a component like the big javascript framework um, made uh, did before like react or angular or something and um, so what we're going to do is then just render not any html structure but a web component and then input the data in there and um, I came up with an example. So you mentioned the timeline. I uh, did another thing. I did um, like a multi chart. And for this is uh, basically I get uh, groups and uh, some data points and I make multiple charts from it. And here you can see each actually has three end data points behind it. And so three rows build group one, three rows group two. They could be actually more than three maybe group one has one group five has ten uh, rows to it but um, it's possible because there is javascript sitting in the web component that handles this so how um, does the html look so we're going to the code and first look at the html so what we first render is um, this is the web component here that is, you can actually, this is not really important. Actually, move it. And um, then I'm going to rendering like every data point in here. I used the data HTML attribute. I think it has no important semantical meaning. Um, but I need some element to uh, put in the children of the component so I can actually scan it easily. And I think a data is the most appropriate component. I also tried to uh, build a JSON to it, but unfortunately Apex uh, always messed this up. So um, this is the way it worked. So basically for every returned row, I render this data point and then the component scans all these and extracts the data from it. And um, yeah, so we can then do the chart. And um, let's quickly look into the component. So it's uh, a little bit bigger. I don't want to go into too, the, too much of the details, but I use D3 
I um, that's the charting library. I create this temp uh, this web component, uh, or also use the shadow DOM, so it's an ex encapsulated. And yeah, this is the whole code um, that's going to render the chart D3 logic. I'm going to skip that. Um, but a disconnected callback, it gets called when the component is added to the DOM. And first, this data is, is empty, it's an array. And then I'm going to call array from this point children. So I'm going to basically scan all the children that are inside this component. And um, then I'm going to uh, make an object uh, with child.get attribute. I can then extract name, time, and amount. And I have to pass int to get the number value for time and amount. And also do a check if this is empty. Apex can also render something in there. And uh, for this, we make sure we just skip the ones that are not rendered from us. In the end, we have this array of data and from that D3 can just uh, render a chart. Um, yeah. And yeah, this is basically it. Um, in the end, I also define the component as with this name. And um, I then uh, have a script to build um, this into a index.js. Uh, and index min, so minified. And um, so now we can go ahead and go um, into Apex. We can create a plugin. Um, and now the important thing, so we, we can only use the multiple one because the single one is basically allowing it to be used in a report and in the report you always have, like uh, it's rendered in each row of the, of the report. And this doesn't make sense as we use can use multiple rows to render a single instance, for example, of here, this our chart here. So um, we can't use this in a report. We only use it standalone, so multiple. Um, I think the naming is a little bit confusing because partial is usable in a report and multiple is a report in itself. And um, so the partial here is um, the thing that's rendered like for each row. And this is only the data tag, the data element we render for each row inside it. The wrapper around it is um, the web component. And we also don't have to pass this text, it's not used, but it doesn't matter, it's just a demo. Then we have to do the Apex uh, dollar rows. And here report row, we actually don't need to put anything in there. So it's showing to me that it is required, but actually it, it still works, I can save it. So, but I'm not sure it can break, then we might have to trick something to wrap something around it or put the data in here, I don't know, or the data tags. Um, but yeah, also, I don't know if I should do something like this. I think it's it's fine because we render valid HTML, but yeah, keep in mind, this is not the way uh, the Apex dev have intended this feature, I guess. So yeah, anything can go wrong. Yeah, of course, I also added the attributes. I uploaded the JavaScript files and uh, just loaded it. Great. And, um, yeah, this is basically it. Or, or I quickly want to show the implementation because when you uh, set this up on your page, so I just have uh, here a query from a JSON. Um, I had that before. So I get a few rows. And in the attributes, I pass the columns, uh, the, the, yeah, the columns to the attributes. And uh, the thing you have to do is you have to set up pagination very high because yeah, this basically doesn't make sense to only get a few rows and also yeah, you have to do it like in a reactive way so it can basically react on if new pages would be loaded. I didn't do it so I said basically disable pagination by just loading lots of rows or all of the rows. And yeah, this is basically it. Uh, one thing still uh, if you want to 
uh, create a web component of your by yourself. I have a small template, uh, web components template um, that gets me up and running faster. It has just a sample boilerplate code for for a component and also webpack and easily to set up so you can get started easily and just run start to do, run a dev server so you can quickly edit and see if it's work and if you create your apex plugin in the end you can just run the build command and then upload the javascript files that are already minimized so yeah this is it i hope this was useful to, for you and um, i hope you make cool stuff with template components i'm really excited to see that and enjoy your day bye